All right, so now we're going to move into attractors and looking at how we might, with attractor objects, uh, work with expressions to cause influence within a collection of elements. So here's our reference, right? Um, metal filings on a table with a couple of magnets, right? And attractors are a really great way to um, cause difference in a, in a grid, let's say, with a decaying value attached. So that as you move away from the attractor, you're getting less of influence here as here. Not it's it's the same concept as using the fields, although we're going to be doing it manually with um, vector math. Right? And this, of course, can range in all kinds of kind of applications in terms of um, uh, pattern making on a facade, on a shoe, uh, for a piece of a garment, right, or or anything. Uh, that uh, even a graphic, right? The, the main idea here is that if we're using a point attractor, that it causes influence to objects, which we'll start with a regular rectangular grid, that it's causing influence based on proximity to that point attractor. So it may be an attraction force, it may be a repulsion force, but in either case, it's decaying as you go away from it, so there's more influence locally, and as you go farther away, there's less influence. Okay, and the way that we're going to actually create our attractors or uh, calculate their influence within our grid is going to be through vectors. And vectors are an abstract data type, right? They're not actually a piece of geometry. Um, so in that way, they're abstract. And they describe two properties, direction and magnitude. So any vector um, can be uh, represented uh, in the same way that this one is, right? Um, which shows us the direction here going from this point to this point. The magnitude is how long this line with an arrowhead is. And of course, the parts of a vector are actually the difference or delta between x, y, and z, right? So if you have a point here, we'll call it x2, and a point here, x1, dx or delta x is x2 minus x1. Right, so here's kind of a representation of all of that. Now, one more thing to note is that in order to actually preview a vector, right, because it's not a piece of geometry, it doesn't exist anywhere, until you actually anchor it to a base point. Right? So we're going to be working with vectors um, with this file and combining vectors and point attractors with some very simple expressions to get different types of uh, kind of in fields of influence um, using our point attractors. So here you can see the kind of um, array of vectors. If you were to just um, draw a vector from each point to the attractor, which is here at the center, or if you were to start to do a little bit of math by dividing it by the square of its length, modify the x and y uh, parts of the vector to uh, adjust how it is actually showing uh, change across the field. Um, these are the th things that we're going to be doing in the next exercise. Okay, and This is kind of what we're going to end up with. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the next file, and that is uh, attractors plus expressions. Okay. And what we've done here is um, we've uh, set up a grid and uh, a series of different um, options for how you might set up your expressions with your vectors. And then afterwards, all we're doing is displaying them. Right? So we're going to do a couple of these. And this is a reference for you to go back and look at each one of them. Right? If you wanted to have an uh, inverse or reverse or any of those types of options, those are found here. Okay, so all the way back here, this is just our triangular grid. So let's go ahead and set up our working file. I'm going to delete all the way to here and save this as working. All right, so all we've done here is we've created a grid, a triangular grid uh, of points, right? And in this case, we've got a, a different icon, which we'll come back to um, notif uh, as a notification here in our grid. Uh, grid points object. Okay, so we should still have three points in our file. There are my three points. So those are going to be what I understand as attractors. 
All right. So let's go ahead and get those three points into Grasshopper by going to params geometry point. I'm going to right click and say set multiple points. So I bring those three points into Grasshopper. And I'm going to label this as my attractor points. Attractor points. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to relate each one of these points to the attractors, right? And specifically, I want each one of my points here, the grid points, to be related to all of the attractors, right? So this guy here at the bottom left-hand corner is going to be influenced by not only just this one attractor, but by all three, right? So in order to do so, we're going to be working with vectors, but we need our grid points to be ordered in a particular way. So as we remember from our previous exercises, if we look at the output of the grid uh, P output, the points at grid centers, we have a data tree that is organized in columns. Right? And before, we had been flattening everything so that we could just work with lists, right? repeating values for scaling, etc. But in this case, we, don't, we want to do kind of the opposite. We don't want to operate on the entire list. We want to operate on each grid point. And in order to get each grid point to be on its own list, we have to graft. So what we've done here is right-clicked this object and said graft. This grows a new path for every object in every list. All right, now the reason why that's important is because we want each one of these points to look to all of the attractors. So if you find yourself verbalizing your objective and you say, for each of these or every one of them, I want to do something, then you're probably going to have to graft your data in order to get it to behave the way you expect. Okay, so with that grafted, let's go ahead and create our, our vectors. If we go to the vector tab, under the vector sub tab, we're going to create a vector by two points, right? The start and the end of the vector. So let's go into, uh, drop that into the canvas, and um, let's take the grid points into A. That's the base point of our vector, and the attractor points are going to be B. Okay, so now we have here. Um, three vectors on every list. And that makes sense, right? Because this grid point, let's say this one here, looks to this point as an attractor, the other attractor point over here, and the third attractor point over here. All right, so let's first preview what those vectors look like. If we go to the vector and then vector sub tab again, there's vector display. All right, so um, we're going to take the grid points, those are our anchors, into A, and V, these are the vectors going in here. So this kind of looks like a mess, but what we get is each one of these points is looking to the three vectors. If you wanted to uh, try and make that, um, that look a little bit better, you could right-click V and say unitize. And that will make them all have unit length 1. Right, so now uh, each one of these points is looking to all three attractor lo locations. All right, so we've got it set up um, as, we, as we want. Okay, so the first um, expression that we're going to use is going to be inverse linear. So if I go to back to here, inverse linear says that you want to divide the vector by the square of its length, okay? So we're going to uh, first note the output of our vector object, which is the original vector here and the length of the vector here. Right, so this is the distance between those two points. So if we take um, that vector and we want to divide it by the square of that length, right? Um, the first thing we need to do is we need to make, uh, we need to find L times L. All right, so if we go to math, operators, sorry, math polynomials, square, 
This is the square of a value. So if we take L, we multiply it by L, right? So we get the square, right? Then we're going to divide by going back to math operators. We want to make sure we get division and not integer division. Don't take this one. Take, into, take the regular division object. We're going to divide our vector by the square of its length. All right now, again, vectors are abstract, so we're not going to see anything. Right? In order to see them, we'd have to go back and turn uh, to grab our vector display again, choosing the new vector and the original anchor points. Okay, so now they're going to be really, really small, uh, which is okay. All right, but now they're decaying in a square graph, square root graph, from the location of the anchor point to the attractor. Sorry, from the attractor moving away. So as you go farther away from the attractor, the vectors are smaller. Okay, now, right now we kind of have a similar issue uh, as before we did our merge fields uh, command, right? We still have three values for every point, three vectors for every point. So we want to bring those together into one value. And the way that we can do that is just to do a simple averaging of them. So if we go to math utility and average each list of three vectors, this will give us the result, v, that shows us the kind of aggregate result of all three of our attractors. So I'm going to turn some previews off so I'm left just with my arrows, right? And now we see the kind of fall off as we move away and the um, intersection of where those attractors are causing influence across points, right? In here, the points are approximately equidistant, equidistant from this attractor and this attractor, so the resulting uh, vectors have to kind of manage that field of influence from one attractor to another. So in this case, it's, uh, it's working perfectly, right? If we wanted to, we could try a different expression just very briefly by um, modifying how exactly the, um, the vector is being calculated, right? So we'll make an expression that says swap x and y parts of our vector and uh, invert, invert one of them. So I'm going to take the result of my average here under vector, vector, decompose. I'm going to take my vector apart, right? So this takes the vector and turns it into its delta x, delta y, and delta z outputs. And then I'm going to recompose it. So I'm going to go back to vector, vector subtab, and do vector x, y, z. y goes into x x goes into y, and z is zero, but we can, we can uh, make sure that we share the same output, right? If I put this into v, now I get the kind of saddle point um, distribution of vectors, right? And additionally, if I wanted to, let's say, right-click x and set an expression, or alternatively, since we've been doing that a few times, let's go to math, operators, negative, this will um, times this value by negative one. Now we get a kind of rotational effect, right, as we move through our field of vectors. Okay, so now what we've done is we've applied one expression to the vectors, right, to have them decay over distance, and another expression to the vectors to have them change their display relative to what the attractor is causing them to do. So the, the spin force that we saw on the fields is um, essentially the same thing as what we did here by taking y and making that x of our vector and negative x becomes y of the resulting vector. Right? So, the, so these are types of expressions that you can look up. There's all, all, all kinds of different ones uh, that you can use. It's just a matter of um, implementing the, the math uh, relative to the vectors. So at this point, this is as far as you wanted to get with the attractors and expressions. Again, there are other options, but you, can, you should experiment with them on the, uh, um, uh, after the webinar is concluded.